Good morning, everyone. My name is Sue Pesh, and it's a real honor for me to be the CEO of the Digital Supercluster, where we're defining and capturing Canada's digital advantage, which is remarkable. Now, I know the weather the past few days has been enough to blow you away or soak you, but a few gusts and downpours is nothing compared to what we're celebrating here today. We're gonna give you just a little sneak peek this morning on what can happen when we truly all work together with the goal of building a better Canada together. And that's what we're celebrating here today. So don't leave. I'm joined this morning by my co-host Paige Richardson. Paige is a remarkable young woman from Haida Gwaii. She's working on the First Nations uh, Great Bear Initiative, and she's been an instrumental leader in bringing together all the partners for the celebration that we're going to have today. Paige, welcome. Great to have you with you with us. Thanks so much, Sue. It's so great to be here with you all today. Uh, and also today, we are very honoured to be joined by our partners, uh, Charles Levine, President and CEO of Llama Zoo. George Fernandez, Chief Technology Officer of Rogers, Christine Smith-Martin, who's our Executive Director at Coastal First Nations, uh, Brad Smith, President of Microsoft, uh, Jennifer Carrero, Taking It Global, uh, Graham Trucks, Innovation Island, and a couple partners that weren't able to join us, but we'd like to mention them, Cheryl Strong from Vancouver Island University and Denise Williams from the First Nations Technology Council. And we've been working really closely with all of our partners on um, advancing connectivity in our communities and building digital capacity for, for youth and future leaders. So that's been really exciting and we're so happy to have you all here today and, and so excited to celebrate this milestone with all of you. Thank you so much for coming. So before we get started on everything, I'd like to introduce Chief Ian Campbell, uh, who is a hereditary leader here in the Squamish Nation. And how a Chief Campbell so much for uh, welcoming us to your beautiful territory today. We're so happy to be here with you. Oh, uh, Paige, and thank you, Sue. Good morning, everybody. Yuan Hatli Kwachnomi, with it's a beautiful day here in MST territory. Yuan Hatli Skokoyen, so it's with. First of all, I want to commend each of you for your vision, your collaboration, and your uh, dedication to affect positive change for our families on the Northwest Coast. Uh, thank you, Christine. It's always good to see you, and I commend your leadership uh, with Coastal First Nations, uh, all of our relatives, uh, creating modern smoke signals with uh, this innovation and technology connecting our families, connecting our young people to uh, future opportunities that are bright. So uh, it's an honour to welcome you here to the shared territories of the Musqueam, the Squamish and the Tsleil-Waututh, uh, three of our families. I represent two of those on my lineage uh, from the Squamish Nation. I'm a hereditary chief, uh, served the last 16 years as an elected official uh, and a negotiator in our rights and titles since 99. Uh, so it's always good to see fruition after generations of effort of our families uh, to really uh, create opportunities that are long lasting and sustainable. So innovation uh, is certainly one of those that will help catapult our young people into a brighter future. So uh, it's an honor to welcome you. I'm going to share a song, which is a tradition uh, of our people as my uh, mentors, my elders have taught me. It's important to welcome your canoes ashore this morning as you've all traveled through the, the rough waters and the, the skies uh, to be here for this uh, important occasion. So we're going to share with Itzap Itzap Mesteuch, which is in my father's language in, in Hunk Amenum from Musqueam. Uh, it says you're all good people. You come from a long lineage of good people. Uh, so it honors you uh, in the business that you are taking care of today uh, in our territory. So this is our Musqueam welcome song on behalf of our three nations here. Osium. Oh, 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 oh,
Ich setze neu auf. Hawa, Chief Campbell. That was a beautiful song. What a way to get things started today. Thank you for welcoming us to our shared territory and a special thank you for all the collaboration that we have with all of our First Nations, Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh and, uh, and the Squamish, as well as the nations that are represented here today and you're gonna hear more from them in a minute. This is the first formal step, this signing ceremony today in what already feels like a remarkable partnership, a partnership between partners across industry, across government, across society, and across the many nations. It's now my pleasure to introduce Mr. Taleb Nurmuhammad, our Member of Parliament for Vancouver Granville. Taleb's a committed, a recognized, and indeed an awarded community contributor, having been involved in a number of uh, hospital foundations, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and I believe uh, Covenant House as well. I think you all know, also know a little bit about technology. It's wonderful to welcome you here today, Taleb, for your first Supercluster event with the digital supercluster. I'll tell you, you've picked a good one. Come on up stage. Well, thank you, Sue, and of course, thank you to my friend uh, Chief Ian Campbell uh, for the very warm welcome. I'm thrilled to be here today on the traditional unceded territory of the Coast Salish First Peoples, the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the Tsleil-Waututh to welcome Coastal First Nations and their partners in taking a leadership role in building the, di the digital capabilities for rural Indigenous communities. Leaders like Paige, who are charting a course for communities to improve their access to the education and, and work opportunities available through online services. Access to opportunities that have not previously been available to our youth. You know, for many of you that know me, I began my career in digital technology and for the last decade have built and led tech companies here and around the world which is why remaining close to tech is so important to me. But what that experience taught me is that tech can either serve to divide people, to create a greater gulf between those who have and those who don't, or it can be a great equalizer in creating opportunity and enabling people of all backgrounds, whether rural or urban, to build, to create value, and most importantly, to connect. This project, which will build capacity in our coastal indigenous communities, is an incredible reflection of the positive power of tech, of how tech can unite, not divide. This is the Digital Supercluster's first Indigenous-led initiative. And it brings together 10 First Nations communities through coastal First Nations with Canadian innovators like Lama Zoo and large global leaders like Microsoft and Rogers. This is an incredible milestone and I am absolutely thrilled to be a part of it. The federal government invested in the Digital Supercluster just over three years ago to position Canada as a global leader in digital innovation. It was a new model to engage big and small industry, academia and communities in creating new opportunities for Canada. It was an opportunity around innovation in this country that would fuel our economy and also benefit citizens with better access to healthcare, education, services and so much more. This project is, as Sue said, a shining example of what we can accomplish when we approach problems together. So it's incredible to see so many members of BC's tech community come together to support connectivity and develop digital capability with the members of Coastal First Nations. And I can't wait to see what is accomplished with this incredible group of people. You know, initiatives like this matter. They make a difference. They stimulate growth, they harness the human imagination, and they support the important work of reconciliation that we must all take on. Your leadership, your collaboration, and your vision is something of which we can all be proud. And it's a model that I believe we must replicate here in BC and across Canada. So on behalf of the Government of Canada, I congratulate you and I look forward to working with you as you innovate and as you build for the future. Thank you so much. Thanks Taleb, I think we'll invite you back. Uh, very nice, very well said. And, and indeed it's in some ways for the Government of Canada and certainly I think for myself and, and for one of our uh, co-founders sitting at the back here, Bill Tam, this is a proud parent moment uh, because um, what we're doing in this supercluster is changing the way Canada approaches innovation. Uh, we're changing the way we think about innov innovation. We're looking at the opportunities to do something better together than we could any of us could do on our own. And what we're celebrating here today is an example of when we broaden 
the spectrum of who we say is in the tent together. It's, there's really no stopping what we can do. And it goes far beyond technology. It goes to building a better Canada, building a better society. And as people who hang around with me know, everything I do, I've done for the last 20, 35 years, 25, 35, my oldest daughter's 35, 35 <laughs> years to build a better Canada for my kids and all of their friends, which are many of you and your children. So thank you for the investment and the, and the trust that the Government of Canada has put in this public policy and in this organization to drive it forward. It's now my pleasure to introduce a truly remarkable community and technology leader, someone who has pioneered as an innovator, an inventor, an investor, an entrepreneur, a mentor, a community leader, and now as BC's Innovation Commissioner. She has the responsibility for helping the province drive forward with innovation and technology. And I can't think of anyone in the province better to do this than the remarkable and irrepressible Jerry Sinclair. Thanks so much, Sue, uh, and good morning, everyone. I'm so delighted to be here at this truly exciting and beautiful, beautiful moment. Um, and I'm deeply honored to welcome and to recognize Coastal First Nations and their partners as true innovators, and indeed, unquestionable leaders in the area of community-led innovation. So I took on the role of Innovation Commissioner about a year and a half ago during the peak of the first wave of the pandemic. And because we were all in the midst of lockdown, I had a lot of time to consider the various components needed to create a sustainable and inclusive innovation ecosystem for the province and how they all worked or perhaps too often didn't work together. The components required for innovation um, are generally agreed upon, well-documented, and seemingly well understood. They include universities and colleges who provide the new ideas and talent required to create companies, which are the backbone of an innovation ecosystem. Industry, which, provide, which provides the, the market and customer purchasing power. Government, which provides public policy and funding programs and the investment community of angels, venture capitalists, and others who finance new emerging technologies. So I guess you could say that I spent a lot of time last year studying the supply chain of innovation. And I came to the conclusion that actually too much emphasis has been placed on the supply side, on investments in research, in creating incubators and accelerators, and in trying to help small startups and tech companies scale. Now, while all of these investments are important and necessary, I've concluded that too little investment has been placed on the demand side, on the market for innovation, that is, on the actual needs of industry, and particularly on the needs of the community within which innovation can grow and flourish. In fact, the community itself, as a vital component of a thriving innovation ecosystem, is almost always left out of the equation. That's why today's event is so important. It's important because it focuses on the connectivity and training and capacity building needs of the community as defined by the community as opposed to being defined by well-meaning governments, educational institutions, industry partners, and investors. And so I sincerely congratulate the Coastal First Nations Connectivity Network in leveraging the strengths of all these incredible partners, Coastal First Nations, Rogers, Microsoft, Lama Zoo, of course the Supercluster, and many others in order to blaze a new path to forward in indigenous-led innovation and economic development. And I want to thank you all for inviting me to participate in this wondrous moment. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Um, I would now like to welcome our next speaker, Brad Smith, president of Microsoft. Brad has been with Microsoft since 1993 and has been instrumental in leading the company's initiatives related to environmental sustainability, human rights, philanthropy, among many others. 
Microsoft is an integral partner in CFN's digital capacity building and has made a substantial contribution to funding and training the Coastal First Nations Connectivity Network. Please join me in welcoming Brad to the podium. Well, thank you. I first want to just uh, say thank you on behalf of all of us from Microsoft that are here today. Thank you for the honor of giving us the opportunity to be part of something so important. Um, I think it's right, especially when you come from a global company like Microsoft, to sort of first just acknowledge what a special thing this is. Um, we are here, we talk a lot around the world increasingly about places and spaces, about land and traditional heritage. And I think this is a special place to do that. Uh, I think there's very few places in the world where you see places of such beauty and even grandeur that you see the places of the coastal First Nations. But I think there's more to it than that. Um, as you all know, there are islands, there are locations here where you find fewer people than at any place or at any point in the last 10,000 years. That's a remarkable state of affairs. You find fewer fish, fewer salmon in the waters than at any point than since well before human history even began. And all of that is a reflection of the fact that technology and exploration and economic development have not always been kind to the people or the nature that was here before all of it began. And I think that gives us a special responsibility to try to make a difference. Certainly for me, I appreciate that one of the reasons that I think this moment can be special is because of other things that have been happening here in British Columbia and in Vancouver and across the province the last few years. When you talk about Bill or you see Sue, the digital supercluster makes it possible to do new things. I think it's a supercluster that's not just a success on a national scale, but it's a global role model, and it gives us the opportunity to raise our ambition. But I think you also heard something important said. Sometimes there are a few things that should cause people more concern than to hear that people who are well-meaning have high ambition because it's also easy to make mistakes. In fact, that in part is what this history is about. So from, for us at Microsoft, we believe that there is a lot that technology can do. It can, it can connect communities that don't benefit from high-speed broadband service today. It can use technology to help people acquire new skills. We can use AI to preserve culture and heritage and even languages. We can open the door to better health care, to better jobs. There are many things that we can do. And we are not the ones who should decide. You are and you will. You'll give us the opportunity to listen. You'll give us the opportunity to learn. And oh my goodness, what a wonderful education we are going to get from all of you. But most importantly, you will give us the opportunity to have you decide and then we'll provide the support that's needed with everything that we can and no more than we should. That is our goal and that's the ambition that I think we can pursue here. So again, thank you. We look forward to being part of a great success. Thank you so much, Brad. Um, I would now like to welcome our Executive Director of Coastal First Nations to the stage. Uh, please join me in welcoming Christine Smith-Martin. Good morning. I'm going to speak in my language because it's really important to, uh, when we do this work, to recognize and ensure our ancestors are, are with us. Doyak sim, 
OXM Chief Ian Campbell for welcoming us on your beautiful, beautiful territory. Ian always shows up. In the urban community here, we never feel like we're alone because Ian comes to our community and supports us in all types of initiatives. So I really want to thank you. When you sing, you bring the ancestors into the room for this really, really important work. So I thank you very much for coming today and starting us off in a good way. My English name is Christine Smith-Martin. I'm the executive director at Coastal First Nations. I also want to acknowledge some of our communities that are here today. Uh, we have Hell's Chuck and New Hulk that are here. If you can please stand. So. Thank you. We're so very happy that you can join us today. It's a little bit scary in some of our communities. We have elders at home, and with COVID happening, it's really important. Um, and, but they came, and uh, many wishes from each of our communities that couldn't come today, but they're very, very excited about what we're about to embark on this journey that we have. Today is such a historic day, and um, it's, it's, I was explaining in the room next door, it, it's a new journey, not only for the corporations that we're partnering with, um, Rogers and Microsoft and Lamazoo, the super digital cluster, the province, the, the feds. When you really think about all of those partners coming together and listening with really great listening ears to our communities. What is it that they want? What are our community needs? Because we're so, even though we're from the North Coast and Central Coast and Haida Gwaii, we are so different. Each one of our communities have different needs. And that's the one amazing thing about this partnership, is each community can decide themselves what is it they want to achieve in their community? And how can this partnership bring them to that place? So we're very excited about that, that piece. We know that through these partnerships, we'll provide that support needed in our communities to shorten the digital divide in our communities, to allow our youth to really embody um, all that it has to offer, uh, through, you know, we were just at Microsoft yesterday and we were in the, uh, the garage. And I think all of our brains started going from our communities thinking, oh my gosh, what can we do with this? If we brought all of our artists in and we sat them down and we showed them how to work this, what can they design? What can our youth design? So I think yesterday, uh, thank you to Microsoft for inviting us there to be a part of that and, and really thinking about uh, the possibilities, because that's really what this is, is really thinking about the possibilities that are out there. You know, we talk about this internet, that the high-speed internet that's coming to our communities soon, and we're very excited and our communities are really excited, planning for what that looks like. They're planning the pros and the cons. They're thinking about the economic pieces that will now come to their communities. And I was talking yesterday about the urban community. We're going to benefit the, from this too as well because language and culture and, and elders will now be shared with our urban communities because they have the high-speed internet. If anybody has gone into our communities, uh, we brought Rogers a while ago into one of our communities. It's difficult. You don't have good coverage. Uh, you're sort of holding your phone up looking for coverage or internet. So um, our communities are going to change in the next little while, and it's going to be very exciting. And it's that premise that we brought these partners together. I really want to acknowledge Colleen and Paige. Colleen, if you can stand up. This is Colleen. <laughs> And Paige have been working tirelessly, getting everybody in the same room and talking the same language. 
and talking with our communities. A lot of us went to Bella Bella Health Chuck Nation a little while ago and had those same conversations. That's very important to us for, to invite our partners into our communities so that they can experience uh, what our communities experience. I, I lastly want to talk a little bit about our partners. Um, one of the things I was sharing is that when our partners first approached and we sat down and we had a conversation about really what this partnership would look like, it had to be based on reciprocity, that we know that we have a lot to offer all of our partners. We have a lot that we can share, that they can learn from us, um, and, and vice versa. So that was really important to us at Coastal First Nation, that it's based on reciprocity. And that each, if you can, uh, if you can imagine as an Indigenous um, organization, your partners are coming to the table talking about uh, the truth and reconciliation recommendations for organizations, corporations. We want to do our part. How can we do our part? That's why we're here. You know, as an, an Indigenous uh, person and organization, you sort of have to shift because we're so used to having to fight to protect our salmon, to protect our forests and our oceans. We, you know, gather and we voice our concerns. So this is new to us too, as it is to the corporations. It's new to us to sit down and really be progressive and, and, be, and not be, pro, be proactive. So I do want to thank, it's a journey, uh, as the partners will tell you, it's new, it's something they've never done before, and uh, we acknowledge that, and uh, we are moving together in this, in this really important journey. As we look forward um, to having our communities come together. Uh, we look forward to eventually having all of our partners come into our community in some capacity. Uh, it's not just about um, the high-speed internet and all of the programs that are coming along with it. It's also about branching off. Each of the communities may have different initiatives that they want to branch off on. And I appreciate the corporations being open to that. There is no sort of set destination. We learn as we go along and we adjust as we go along. I also want to acknowledge Paige here. Um, it's really important in our communities that we uplift the, uh, the young and upcoming leaders. And I think that goes for, you know, you probably do the same thing in your corporations. We want to make sure that we nurture these leaders. Um, and we think about that when we think about these partnerships in our community. We want to make sure we nurture, we have the programs to be able to teach them, to uh, nurture that leadership in our community. So I really want to acknowledge Paige um, and all of the amazing work that she has done. It's, it's so incredible for us at Coastal First Nation to have a young Haida um, woman that is leading the way. So if we can acknowledge... So last but not least, as we journey down together um, in this area, I'm very excited. Uh, our board, uh, Marilyn, our, our president, um, she is the, also the chief counselor in Health Check Territory, joined us last night. And she said she can hear the excitement in the room. And when you really think about these partners and the excitement from the community and, and trying to find our pathways together, um, our hope is to come back here in a year and talk about all the amazing initiatives that we have accomplished and then set the agenda for the following year. So, Hawa, thank you for, for coming today and thank you for the communities and thank you to the partners and everybody that's here. Doixin. Well, that was something, you know. Um, there are lots of generational opportunities that we hear about these days. Uh, there are few that are more important to us as parents. 
as community leaders, as sisters and brothers, and as citizens, than to make sure that the opportunities that are in front of us, opportunities like technologies, are developed, deployed, and scaled in ways that are inclusive, that are e equitable, and that respect the heritage and the history and the needs of the communities and the citizens that we're serving with these technologies. And in many ways, that's what the supercluster is about because we're building a better Canada for the Colleen's of the world, for the pages of the world. Sydney Goodfellow's in the room here somewhere. Sydney, Sydney, Sydney at the back there. Sydney from the supercluster who's, who's bringing these folks together. Us old folks, well, I'll just put myself in that category. Us old folks have a responsibility and I think it's a really great opportunity to make sure that we take your lead, that we take the leads from our young people, that we take the leads from our communities and we take the leads from our citizens to make sure that we do better for you in the future than we have in the past. And I wanna really thank uh, Brad and Microsoft for once again bringing us to ground on why we do these things. We do these things to make sure that we do build better communities, that we build a better province and a better country. And Brad, I bet you had 10,000 other places you could be today. 9,999 of them are warmer and drier than what Vancouver has been over the last couple of days. But I'll tell you, you know what? Every time Brad comes into town, this is gonna sound really silly, it's sunny. <laughs> it's sunny, somebody knows that you come here. But you have a way of filling the room with positivity, with optimism, with a sense of can-do, and also with a sense of commitment. And, and we feel that in our little supercluster, we feel that ripple through everything we do in every context with Microsoft. We're absolutely delighted to have Rogers involved. Uh, there are organizations across this country that are delivering high-speed internet and other services. The commitment that you have made, especially to our First Nations community, is remarkable and it's a, it's a privilege and an honor to get to know you. Charles, we've been hanging around for a long time. Uh, you're changing the world uh, from a little tiny corner of Vancouver Island, but don't make any mistake about what you're doing. And, and it's not just the technologies, it's how you show up at these meetings, it's how you show up um, with your teams. So thank you very much. And of course, uh, to our First Nations partners who are here, um, you're the reason that we're all here today because if you weren't interested in collaboration, we can't do it on our own. We can't do it on our own unless you're here driving us, giving us the sense of purpose and giving us the direction. And when it comes to having the umbrella through which a little organization like ours operates, it's the Government of Canada, it's the Government of British Columbia, it's people like you, Jerry, that give us that, that policy guidance. And yes, the investment to keep going. So um, hold that thought, okay? Because um, that's important as well. So uh, all, of, all of us today here are a little community. And there's a handful of people that are really driving this. But there's millions of people out there generations out there, they're gonna benefit from what we're celebrating here today. So this is a big deal today, but make no mistake about it. We've only just started. Just wait till you see what we've got coming down the path from our little supercluster organization working with all of you. Thank you very much, have a wonderful day.